A $350 million deal to ship 7.1 million pounds of Canadian uranium from Saskatchewan to India was signed today. The agreement comes after years of discord on the topic of nuclear energy after New Delhi used Canadian technology to develop a nuclear bomb in the past. With his reaction to today's massive deal is Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall. Uh, Premier Wall, how significant is this deal for Saskatchewan? It's historic. It's very significant. Um, in India, they are expanding their their nuclear power production. Uh, they want to uh, expand it by about 650 percent actually are the plans. They're building six reactors currently to add to a fleet of about 21 and so they've been getting their sourcing their uh, their fuel, their uranium from other places. We've wanted a chance to have access to that market. In Canada we're a world leader in uranium because of the uh, the resources we're lucky to have in Saskatchewan. We mine about 15 percent of the world's production. And yet we've had no access to the, the most robust uh, nuclear power programs in the world, which, which are in China and India. And credit the Prime Minister. Uh, the federal government worked hard to conclude a nuclear cooperation agreement to deal with the issues you've just referenced in India and with respect to China, to, to, to guard against the, the non-proliferation issues and uh, ensure that we can see some uranium moving into, uh, from Canada, moving into those into those countries. It's something we had worked on as a province. We'd been involved in trade missions. I had a chance to meet uh, Prime Minister Modi when he was a chief minister, which is like a premier there. And, and so we've been working on this one together with the company Cameco and the federal government. And it's a, it's a good day for, for Saskatchewan. It's a good day for the Canadian mining sector. So how long would that have been in the works? I mean, obviously a lot of behind the scenes putting this deal together. Years. Uh, it's, it's really been years, I think, that Cameco has been working on it. Now the federal government, uh, after we got elected, we, we worked, partnered with the federal government to encourage these nuclear cooperation agreements uh, with China and India. And by the way, in the case of China, that agreement's in place and 50 million pounds of Canadian uranium are moving into that market uh, up till the year 20, uh, 2025. So uh, this, these things take a while because we need to be, uh, I think Canada wants to be careful about the agreements. They need to be thorough. Australia had executed, uh, in the case of China, a nuclear cooperation agreement, and I think there was some, some pretty informative uh, precedent set in that, that that answered a lot of questions for the Canadian side. And, well, what kind of precedents would those be? Well, guarding against the proliferation issues and wanting to ensure that, um, that, there was, uh, that this was for civilian uh, nuclear uh, power use only. Uh, and um, uh, you know the uh, the agreements in place, I think, are going uh, are, are going to achieve that for us. And in the meantime, uh, we have uh, we have uh, added strength in our mining sector now. So, what kind of mechanisms do you have then to verify that this uranium isn't going towards the nuclear weapons sector? There's a level of transparency in the agreements. They're federal agreements, so that question's best placed to the federal government. It's a state to state issue, and. Uh, but we know that there's a priority placed on transparency and a willingness on the part of both sides to exchange information as needed and requested, I think, and, and updates are, are necessary and need to be regular. I, I noted that today when he made the announcement with Prime Minister Harper, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, noted that uh, India very much appreciated the trust that Canada was placing in that country with this nuclear cooperation agreement, with this fuel uh, supply agreement. I think that says a lot. I think in Prime Minister Modi we have a, a very dynamic leader who wants to, who wants to, by the way, ensure that power production in India is cleaner. They also have on the books plans for 500 more coal plants because their, their energy demands are growing by 3% a year. 400 million Indians do not have any electricity. And he's saying we need to ensure that there's electricity, but in its cleanest form possible relative to GHGs. And of course, nuclear then is preferred to coal. I'm wondering then, when you're looking forward, 7.1 million pounds is a lot, but as you say, relative to example for the, the China deal, uh, it's not a huge amount. What's the potential there? What's the economic potential for Saskatchewan? Well, the, uh, I think the annual consumption in India uh, of, uh, of uh, uranium is about 3 million pounds, but they want to increase their nuclear power production by 600%. So the math gets exponential in terms of the opportunity that's there, uh, and uh, that's why it's good to be there. By the way, the company that'll be supplying the uh, the fuel, the uranium, Cameco, has a great track record uh, in our country in terms of employing Aboriginal people. In fact, the best record, uh, the best industrial record for Aboriginal employment, 45% of their workforce, First Nations and Métis people in northern Saskatchewan, 3,500 people in that workforce, and they work with contractors who are First Nation. It's a success story, and one where we, we've seen some stress in the uranium sector, obviously, in the last number of years. So this is some good news in a sector where companies are, are, are have demonstrated 
demonstrated a commitment to uh, First Nations and Métis people, but in general to economic growth. And in Saskatchewan, we're fortunate to have a diversified economy where when oil's in a bit of trouble, we see some strength in other sectors. We just have about a minute left, but I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, looking forward again, some people were hoping that there would be a FIPA, that there'd be a free trade agreement with India. It didn't get that far. Uh, is that something that you're hoping to see from a Saskatchewan perspective? You know, the answer is yes. Uh, we want to see more free trade agreements in Asia. We appreciate the federal government's move with respect to Korea. Uh, they're working in the region. We now have an ambassador in the ASEAN, the Southeast Asian nations. Uh, we know this is a priority for the federal government. It needs to be. Uh, you know, we all quote Wayne Gretzky when he said we, we, we should go, he tried to go to where the puck was going to be, not to where it is. The puck's been in Asia for a long time, economically speaking. It's going to be there for a long time. And Canada needs to be very much engaged. And it's good to see the federal government uh, turning its focus uh, to Asia. And I think there might be something possible with respect to the Indian relationship and, a, and an agreement down the road. Brad Wall, thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.